Hello, foodie fans. Welcome to the Big Food Talk, produced by Tough Monkey Entertainment. I'm your host, Sal Conca. This show supports restaurants, chefs, and food pioneers with your help. Head to bigfoodtalk.com to make your donation today or check out our fun apparel line with proceeds going directly to participating restaurants. Special thanks to the Long Island Food Council, Dine LI Facebook group, and Yelp Long Island for supporting this episode. I can't wait for you to hear the inspirational story of a little donut shop located on the North Fork of Long Island. I just spoke with Jim and Kelly, the owners of North Fork Donut Company. It may have been their passion for sweets that got them into the donut biz, but it's their business smarts and ability to collaborate with other local businesses that have led to their wild success, even in times like these. Let's hear their story. Welcome to the Big Food Talk. Welcome to the first episode of the Big Food Talk. I'm really excited to see you guys. How are you all doing? We're doing great. Awesome. So let's talk about North Fork Donut Company. When did you guys actually open your business? Well, um, our business now, uh, what was it? What was our opening date was June 5th, June 5th of 2018. 2018. Yeah. I mean, we were, uh, yeah, we were, we had, we've been in our space for a little over two years now. And, um, I think coming up on this past June, no, this June coming up will be two years, yep. right? So we're a little under two years still. Um, uh, yeah, 2020 in June will be our two year mark and, uh, we're opening up currently opening up another location that, um, hopefully will be open around the same time actually. Wow, crazy times to be opening up a second locations, right? I obviously could not have foreseen what's going on here today. How did the idea come about for North Fork Donut Company? Like, who's the donut person in the family? Well, the both of us, actually. <laughs> um, I come from a background of a beer background. So fermentation has always kind of been in my, my nature and my uh, interest and expertise. And Kelly's been a lifelong baker. Um, and when we met, we always had kind of a pipe dream to open up a bakery together. Uh, so donuts seemed like a, a good transition for the two of us. We left our jobs and opened up our donut shop, uh, sort of on a whim, just like, Hey, let's do this. Let's get it done. Something that we both want. So, uh, we kind of just pushed forward and made it happen. I love it. The, uh, the good old hustle and grind. Like if we all watch shark tank, right? The American dream, the entrepreneurial dreams live and well, even here on long Island where the cost of living is so high and, and the risk is even higher here. So you're the baker. Where did you learn how to first make donuts? Was donuts something that you gravitated towards? Or were you a full-time baker before this? How did, how did that come about? I was really just an avid baker because of my mom. We uh, Donuts weren't a huge staple. We It was really cookies, rainbow cookies, holidays, Easter breads, you know, all of those things. And then we kind of dabbled in donuts together. We started making them, I would say probably about almost three years ago now. Um, just really enjoyed them. It was really fun. It's, it's, there's an art to it. Um, and then we started to realize that we were getting pretty good and then better. And, and then we were like, wow, these are really good. And then he's the genius with the business plan. So we kind of just, it was really very collective. Yeah. So it's like the perfect match for you guys, right? Husband and wife in business together, but you guys complement each other, obviously with your different strengths and weaknesses which is awesome. I think that's how a lot of businesses turn out to work it, in any partnership, right? If you have those differences where you can complement each other and help each other rise up together, it's awesome. It has to be an even balance. Exactly. So, you know, we're dealing with this chaos, I'll call it, that's happening right now. But with any business, there's always struggles in getting it started. So before all this happened, like, what was the biggest struggle in getting your business established? Or is there like a story you guys had before you opened up your first shop? Well, we had no employees. <laughs> that was the biggest struggle. It was just he and I. Yeah, the that original was. plan was um, just the two of us. We'll figure it out. It'll be a small little family shop and we'll make it work. We don't need a big staff, if any staff. Um, and the demand and, the, and the, the response from the community and the line that we had out the door from the second we opened our doors um, said otherwise. So we learned really quickly that um, we, it wasn't going to work just the two of us. We were going to need a staff. So the first week or two, we literally had our best friends, our brothers, our sisters, our fathers, our mothers behind the counter. People were making donuts that never made donuts before. And Kelly and I were running back and forth trying to make it work. And um, so, yeah, we realized pretty quickly that we were going to need a staff and quite a big one. 
Um, and I think we started off with maybe five or six employees and continue to grow it to now uh, with the new location opening up, we're going to be close to around 30 employees. So um, that was probably one of the biggest chaoses and the biggest lessons that we learned really early on was that uh, if we want this to be a viable business and if we wanted to grow to where we've grown it today, we, we were going to need a little bit of help from, uh, from, uh, from uh, you know, the outside world. We were going to need some employees. Uh, we were going to need some kitchen help. We were going to need some bigger equipment. You know, I mean, the, we literally grew outgrew our original idea within three or four days of opening. <laughs> so it's been, it was, it was quite the, uh, the lesson we learned. That's a, uh, that's a beautiful thing, right? Like, I mean, that's like the best problem to have, right? When you, yeah. right. it was really a beautiful thing. Very humbling. You know, yeah. it's like you said, it's like, a, I, we've been super fortunate since the day we opened that all the problems that we have have literally been the best problems. You how much has the location on the North Fork played into that? I know how tight that community is. I mean, uh, it was a concern initially because it, it is a tight knit community and uh, they sort of take care of their own. Um, so we had to really, I mean, we, we, it wasn't like we were new to the community. We've been going out there. We've been members of the, of the North Fork community for over a decade now. Uh, our family's had a home out there for a long time. But it's even, even that is a little bit different than being a local of Mattatuck or a local of the North Fork. But um, everybody, I mean, who doesn't love donuts? You know, we, we really did. We got welcomed with open arms, I think, pretty quickly. Um, and it was really important to us for that to happen as quick as it did because uh, we felt that one of the pivotal parts of our business was opening excuse me, in that location on the North Fork. Uh, we really feel, Kelly and I feel that the North Fork is sort of like a burgeoning like hub for uh, like uh, fine dining and good food and progressive ideas, new businesses. And I think it's really in the early stages. Um, you know, it's not a city or a metropolitan area. So I, I feel I'm reluctant to compare it to like a Williamsburg in the 90s. But like there really are a bunch of amazing small businesses, really talented chefs, uh, really compelling ideas going on out there. And the community, the surrounding, like the location of it, you know, being near the water, it really allows, it lends itself to tons of amazing ideas, fresh fish, fresh dishes, really, really interesting, unique cuisine that you can offer on the North Fork um, and unique ideas you can offer there rather than uh, other places on Long Island. So it was really important for us to get, get into that community, get in, get in quick and, and, and really become a staple in that community and offer something back to the North Fork. Um, and I think we, we really, we really succeeded in doing that uh, early on, which was, it was tremendous for us. Yeah, that's awesome. And I know one of the things that I noticed about you guys and your business is how important collaborations are for you guys, right? You guys collaborate with a lot of restaurants, companies for flavor inspiration. So how important have collaborations been to the success of the business? <laughs> collaborations are, uh, it, it's, that's sort of been my thing since we opened. Um, one of the again, one of the pillars of our success I knew was going to be collaborations. Again, I come from the beer world. So collaborations are all over the place. Um, it's a, it's a grassroots market where people are a grassroots industry where people are working together to lift everybody up, you know, the rising tide lifts all ships. And I feel like that's sort of, um, really prevalent in what we do and what we want to do in our model. Um, we're not competing with, uh, with anybody, you know, we, we, we're a small business and it's not even a market or a sector or a category. All small businesses have to really knit together and, and, and get together and rise each other up. Who are some of your partners today that you're currently working with? Oh man, that's all we do. I mean, uh, well, not all we do, but it's, it's a giant part of what we do. So we actually, this week have a new, um, a new collaboration coming out. It's a, it's an old, but new release. So it's destination Un unknown brewing company. We did our strawberry milkshake, strawberry frosted donut milkshake IPA with them. Uh, and we're re-releasing that because it's become one of their best selling beers over time. So they really wanted to re-release it. And we thought it was a great idea because it's just a super fun collaboration, a great project. Uh, so we're re-releasing that beer this week and we're going to be delivering, uh, around, I think 10 cases of it, four packs, so uh, it's going to be like 240 deliveries um, of four packs with four, four, pack of donuts, four packs four pack of donuts of and a four pack of beer. So you can get a four pack of our strawberry milkshake donut IPA and a four pack of our donuts. I, I think we're going to be offering that uh, sometime at the end of this week. And we haven't even announced that yet. So this is kind of the first time we're talking about it. 
Awesome. So we'll get that out there and hopefully everybody will hear and pick one to pick one of these up. And I mean, are you, so are you guys offering delivery and takeout right now? I mean, the shop is just still open. How are you guys operating right now? Uh, so we, we, when this whole thing happened, all this chaos happened, obviously every business out there realized that they were going to have to shift gears and try to figure out how to make things work during this time. Um, again, we, we, so we, we started getting everything in place. Now, how do we offer delivery? How do we make this work? The store is going to be dead. We don't know, you know, everything's kind of uncertain at the moment. So we started pairing up and doing some more collaborations. We paired up with first with North Fork Brewing Company and we did a quarantine kit where we sold a dozen of our donuts with two, four packs of their beer. We made a really funny video. We put it out to the internet. We had a really awesome response on that. News 12 aired it. So we got, um, a little bit of press on it and it was really great. Um, and because of that, um, I think, um, sail away reached out to us and, or vice versa we reached out to them. and, uh, sail away cold brew, sail away coffee. Yep. Um, we're, we've been friends with Chris and, and his team since we opened our doors. They've, they've been a partner of ours since day one for us. So, um, we partnered up with them and again. It's, it's, it's a small business thing, finding the strengths that we each have. Chris happens to have a really great infrastructure for delivery and logistics and that end and operation on that end. Um, we don't have that. We're a small, you know, uh, storefront, brick and mortar shop. So, yeah. but we have a very marketable product. We have a product that people are really still interested in getting even do- through all this chaos. So we thought we can help each other out. So we released it. Um, three different packages. You can get cold brew coffee and our donuts and it just caught fire. And we did, um, New York city to East Hampton, New York city to East Hampton. I, I forget what the, what the numbers were, but we did all, we have a small kitchen that we're currently mm-hmm. trying to expand and you know, a pretty modest staff. We have maybe have like four or five people in the kitchen making these donuts aside from Kelly and I, and we did around 4,000 donuts in 12 hours, uh, based on demand. Yeah. And we realized that that's about as far as we can push our kitchen without a complete all out mutiny on our hands <laughs> with our staff because they were we had people uh, sleeping on flower bags in the back just it was yeah. like we were working from seven o'clock at night the night before all through the night until seven o'clock the next day so we did a 24-hour shift and um it was really great to do that but we realized that we it's not a sustainable model for us so we pulled it back a little bit we changed the days we did it again this week and we sold out within a day or two, all of our deliveries, we did 250 half dozen deliveries on Thursday, on Friday and 250 half dozen deliveries on Saturday. So it broke it up a little bit and made it a little bit more manageable for our kitchen. Um, so yeah, we did, you know, we did that collaboration with them and it worked out really great for the both of us. They sold a ton of coffee and we sold a bunch of donuts um, along with all of these deliveries. We're also um, donating to hospitals all across Long Island as well. Yes. So yeah, it's, it's been really important for us. Kelly comes from, uh, Kelly used to work at the hospital, uh, at Mather Hospital, before we opened up the donut shop. We have a lot of friends and family um, that work in the medical field. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even if we didn't, it's really obvious um, how much they're going, what they're going through right now and what they're putting on the line to make sure that people are taken care of. You know, they, uh, them and first responders, Absolutely. hands down, have the hardest jobs out there right now. So it was really important for us to make sure that they knew that we were thinking about them and we wanted to get product out to them. Christian Sailaways donated mm-hmm. countless cases to them as well. And um, that was really important for us to do too. That's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I, a friend of mine, his wife is a nurse at uh, St. Francis hospital. You know, it's, I, I hear from them, the amount of stress their family is under compared to even the rest of us is just incredible yeah. when you're, when you're in that situation. So yeah, anything we can do to help, first responders and anybody on the front lines right now, uh, the Dyna Li group, which, you know, I've said, mentioned before, um, is helping promote this show. They're doing tons of donations every day to different hospitals across Long Island, just uh, delivery from different restaurants and connecting different people. So um, it's been great to see how the community comes together and for small businesses like yourself, how quickly you're able to pivot in this environment, right? To be able to figure out like, how do I make things work? How, you know, it's not, it's not the end of the world. I got to just figure out how to do things differently to keep my business going. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's an important message for a lot of restaurants that it, and other businesses that are just maybe sitting out there listening to this at some point and, and feeling like they don't have a choice or don't have options or don't know what to do. So it's great to hear all the advice that you can even give them um, to help them continue their businesses in terms of some of the fun stuff, which let's hear from both of you, which are your favorite flavors? You guys have a favorite flavor you guys make variety favorite donut is the jelly donut it's the classic old school jelly donut gotcha. 
old school. I like it. Yeah. Very simple. <laughs> yeah. We always use the comparison of like pizza shops. Like if your cheese slice sucks, then probably the rest of your pizza sucks. <laughs> so we figured our glazed donut always has to be perfect, you know, because that's sort of the backbone of all everything that we make. So I definitely have to agree with Kelly. Uh, glaze is probably my go-to, but like if I'm splurging and I'm going for a fun flavor, mm -hmm. uh, my go-to is always the caramel coffee cake. Uh, we make a homemade cinnamon streusel at our shop and, um, it's just delicious. It tastes like one of those uh, those Drake cakes you used to get back in the day. Uh, oh, we yeah. had flavors when we first opened, and we were trying to figure out, you know, what do we make? And we thought, like, let's let's think of all the treats that we used to love when we were kids, and see if we could turn them into donuts somehow. So the coffee cake was one of our first ideas, and it became probably our, our best seller over time. Mm -hmm. And it's just delicious. That's so cool. And I know Easter just passed. I saw a bunch of pictures with uh, donuts with the Easter peeps in them, which was awesome. That, so that like made me feel like a kid again. I was like, these are great. You know, as you can get people peeps. I mean, I, I went out to a couple of stores this weekend because we didn't have a bunch of Easter stuff. Like the, the shelves were wiped out. You couldn't even get some stuff at certain places. Give the kid an Easter egg hunt in here, stuff like that. So, um, you know, the fact that you guys are delivering and putting these great concoctions together is awesome. I saw on your website, you have a flavor forecast. So how do you guys come up with these new creative, so right, jelly donuts and the classics, you guys have like eight flavors that you stick with, but then you have all these specials running like all the time. How do you guys keep up with this and creatively keep that going and supply and how, how do you guys keep up that flavor forecast going? Well, one of my- He's the talker, obviously. <laughs> oh, she's the face on the, on the, on the talker. <laughs> Uh, right. I, I think it's, it's been uh, one of our most important things as we grew as a business was to uh, hire people that are just as smart, if not smarter than us and talented people. And we uh, are lucky enough to have a kitchen filled with amazing qualified pastry chefs with incredible uh, creativity. And, um, you know, it's, it's just something that we realized early on. It can't just be Kelly and I. And, you know, we, 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 Kelly and I check off on all the flavors, but we definitely have a little Willy Wonka factory in the back with a bunch of amazing pastry chefs and creative, uh, creative folks back there that are coming up with great ideas and always bouncing stuff off Kelly and I. And um, between us and everybody that we have working with us, um, the flavors are just going to keep rolling and, and they're going to keep getting more creative and, and more and more fun. And the flavor forecast was just a really, um, I think, smart way for us to um, relay what we're doing for the month to the public. And it's really taken off for us because we were getting phone calls, like 90% of the phone calls we got throughout the day were, what do you have today? What are you going to have tomorrow? What are you going to have next week? You know, what, what kind of donuts do you make? What can we get for this party? So um, the flavor forecast really eliminated all of that. And aside from eliminating it, it, it created an amazing platform for people to just get interactive with our product and our mm -hmm. business. So it really helped out for us. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure it gives you guys a ton of social media content to keep the content wheel moving and, you know, all that type of stuff. And I mean, I know Rachel, who you work with for your social and, you know, all that type of stuff. So I, I you know, you guys do an amazing job at that. And, you know, I know you guys have a really rabid following. Um, they've been so supportive. So for people that don't know about you, what are the best places that people can find out about the flavor forecast? How can they get in touch with you guys? Where can they connect with you on social media? So uh, the best place to find this, the, anything that we're doing right now is Instagram. Always Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, we're at nofodoco, N-O-F-O-D-O-C-O. -O. Our Instagram is where you can see what we're making, what we have made, uh, any promotions that we have coming out, collaborations that are coming down the road. Um, and our flavor forecast is on our website, as well as there should be a link tree, I believe it's called, in our Instagram where you can click on, and it'll give you just a list of all the stuff that we offer, flavor forecast, website, promos, order forms for holidays, um, all that fun stuff. So um, Instagram, I would say, would be the easy, easily the best platform to keep up on what we're doing. Okay, awesome. And it's at just at NoFodoco, right? Yep, yes. at NoFodoco. Awesome. Well, guys, I really appreciate you pitching in and, and keep dedicating your time for this show and because it's going to help a lot of Long Island restaurants and other businesses here on Long Island. And I just want to thank you for everything you're doing, obviously the, the donations you're making to the front lines and, and all that type of stuff. And I just wanted to thank you. Anything else that you want to share that maybe we didn't discuss today about your business that people should know about? Sure. I would say um, uh, one important thing is we're actually still open our store. Um, 
We are deemed an essential business. So we're doing curbside pickup and we also have a pickup window uh, in our store. So if you come to our shop, we have all of our donuts plastered up on the, on the, on the door. So you can see what we're making for that day. You can make your choices. You walk around the side of the building and we have a cashier at the window that can, you can still get all of your donuts. You can get a cold brew coffee still, all of our subtlety, all of our offerings, any merchandise, but mainly the donuts. Um, we're still open. Come out. You know, you want to get out of the house, put the kids in the car, take an afternoon trip out to Mattituck and get yourself a delicious donut. You got it. Well, awesome, guys. Thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to seeing your continued success when we get back to our new normal. And I'm sure you guys, I have no doubt hearing how smart and intelligent you guys are at running your business. I have no doubt you guys will continue with your success. So thank, thank you. you so much. All right, guys, have a great day. All right. Thank best you. of luck to you. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to the Big Food Talk produced by Tough Monkey Entertainment. Subscribe on iTunes and wherever you listen to podcasts. Follow us on Instagram for behind-the-scenes takes or watch complete episodes on YouTube. Don't forget to make a donation at BigFoodTalk.com.